going together. Mr. Davis, I want to keep it going, keep it going. Let me ask you a question real quick. How many people in this room are ex-smokers? Okay. How many people enjoy vaping? How many people like your 30 mil bottles? How many people like your flavors? Real quick, how many people want to keep vaping the way it is? Okay, this man's going to tell you how to do it. So get, put your hands together real quick, UK, for Mr. Dimitri. Keep it going for Chris and the Vapers. And Teddy Pop, looking at the booth, Rich and Lisa over there. I'm also joined by another special guest. Matt from Suck My Mod is on the stage here. Round of applause, please. And of course, the one and only David Dorn from Vapor Trails TV, one of the biggest advocates here in the UK fighting for your rights to vape. They're just as important as everybody else in this room. David's going to give you a little bit of the details of what's going to be implemented here in the next month. One thing that I want to tell you is that the TBD is a reality. It's here. We've got to stop putting our heads in the sand thinking it's going to blow over. But the good thing is, look at this crowd. Look how many ex-smokers we have in Britain. Isn't that a fantastic thing? All of you are here. I'm here all the way from Chattanooga, Tennessee. You know why? Because I quit smoking. I would have never met you guys without vaping, so let's keep that going. I'm going to have David give you a little introduction on the TBD. Then Matt's going to introduce himself. Then we're going to do a little Q&A session. You can ask anything you want. Even David Dorn's underwear size. Whatever, anything you want to ask, you can ask and we're going to have some fun, okay? David Dorn, please. Holy C! We're all vapors. We're all ex-smokers. Unfortunately, even after five years of hard work talking to Brussels, talking to the Department of Health, talking to the MHRN, talking to all kinds of people, the TPD is happening. It happens on the 20th of May. But it's not all bad news. Have we got anybody here from Hungary? Hungary over there. You guys are going to suffer with the TPD in Hungary. We got anybody here from Austria? If you're from Austria, you're fucked. Anybody here from Romania? We got somebody from Romania. You're only slightly less fucked than Austria. Here in the UK, here's what's going to happen. As of the 1st of May, nothing. As of the 20th of May, same as the 1st of May, the only difference you will see is that there can be no television advertising for e -cigs, no radio advertising for e -cigs. There needs to be a test case with a non-nicotine containing e -cig. That will happen, and then we'll know where we go from there. But otherwise, as of the 20th of May, you can buy 30 mil bottles. You can buy 120 mil bottles. You can buy litre bottles. As of the 20th of May next year, you're fucked. And I'm sorry to put it that way, but you are. Now, the New Nicotine Alliance, have you all heard of the New Nicotine Alliance? We work for you, we work with you. I'm a trustee thereof, and it's my job, together with my colleagues, to talk to the Department of Health to try and make things easier for you. So here's what's being made easier. You will buy, as of the 17th of May next year, two mil tanks. But you can buy five mil extensions. And they won't need to be notified. That's good news, isn't it? Say, thank you, NNA. Thank you, NNA. That's what I like to hear. There's all kinds of other things that are going to be happening, but there'll be no notification on mods. So you can have a 30-watt mod. You can have an 80-watt mod. And you can have a 240-watt mod. Say thank you, NNA. Thank you, NNA. That's what we like to hear. Look, the bottom line on it is, between now and the 20th of May next year, you aren't going to see much of a difference. Come the 20th of May next year, it's 10 mil. It's 18 milligram. 
but we're trying hard to change it. We need your help. This week, we've seen two major setbacks. The Totally Wicked Challenge went down the plug hole. We had a feeling it would. And then the FDA deeming regulations. I'm so sorry, Dougie, I'm so sorry. FDA deeming regulations came out. So we've had two setbacks, but what that means is we need to fight harder, we need to fight stronger, we need to fight louder, and we need to fight with more voices. Are you in? Yeah. Are you in? Yeah. Are you in? Yeah. Great. Now what I want you to do, all of you, log on to the NNA website. It's nnalliance.org. Sign up. We don't want your money. We want your voice, we want your passion, we want that kind of thing. We need you to talk to your MPs, to talk to your MEPs, to talk to all of your representatives and tell them, not in these words, but tell them, the TPD is shite! And we want shot of it as soon as possible. We're okay in the UK for the time being, but our colleagues and friends in the rest of Europe are quite honestly, fucked. And we don't want them to be. That's the same as fuck? Yeah, it is. It's actually the same as fact. I gotta translate for the American on my right hand side. Are you alright with this, Danny? Okay, man. And you're American too, ain't you, man? Yeah, I'm just nodding my head. Alright, I'll do it in Jordan. If we, if we don't shout, if we don't act, if we don't help everybody around all 28 member states, we will all be and do we want to be? No, we fucking don't. Am I right? Yeah. Are you in? Yeah. Here's Matt. Go there. I, I don't know how I follow this guy. I need his energy. Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, that's awesome. I'm Matt from YouTube. Suck my mod. So you may have heard of me. I'm not very cool. Um, I appreciate you guys having me out here. It's, you have an amazing community. It's just huge. I did not expect this. I thought it was going to be, you know, in a little barn somewhere or something, but this is amazing. This is a little barn. <laughs> You're not in Texas anymore. <laughs> uh, I've been learning the last couple of days since I've been here more about the TPD. Uh, it sounds tough, but at the same time, it's awesome that you have people like this you can stand behind. You need to stay together, stay organized, and uh, fight as one voice. That's all I can say. I need to go get some caffeine. <laughs> All right, as Dave said, this is a united fight. Us in America are suffering with FDA regulations. You guys are going to suffer with TBD. Just like every other country, because of the special interests that are fighting against vaping. We're up against giants, pharmaceutical giants, big tobacco giants, and governments that fill their cash registers with deaths of people that smoke cigarettes. So I don't care where you're from. If you're a vapor, you need to stand up for your right to vape and live a healthier lifestyle and help those around you that are still smoking. We have to keep vaping around. All right, we're going to take some questions. Anybody have any questions? Any question? And then I'll, I'll just come over there and relay because we don't have a cordless mic. All right, hold on, let me get it. I'll hold that. I am a mic stand. Mic stand. I'll let you answer. Okay. So the question is, if we fight to leave the EU, would that help vaping? Okay, in the short term, no. In the longer term, yes. Apparently, if we vote Brexit on the 23rd of June, it'll take two years to get out of Europe. Once we're out of Europe, then we are a sovereign state. If we are a sovereign state, then we get to talk to our MPs, and we don't have 27 other member states interfering in what they decide. And I'm here to tell you now that the Department of Health does not want to do the TPD. And I think if we leave, it's not the only reason I think we should leave, but I think if we leave, within three years we can get rid of it. And that's good news. Is that good news? So would you suggest that everybody votes so vote yes on the exit? I would say vote leave. Would I say vote leave? Hell yeah. Next question. Got it. So the question is, are you concerned on the black market and how is the government going to police the black market? 
they're not going to police the TPD. Never mind the black market. Look, bottom line on it is, there will be a black market. It will be highly organised. You are probably standing beside somebody who will be part of that now. Indeed, you'll all probably be ringleaders. <laughs> Hands up if you'll be a ringleader. Yeah, there you go. Look, there is going to be a black market in 72 milligram juice. Anybody that says different is telling porky pies. The Department of Health is aware of that. Trading standards are aware of that. Everybody's aware of that. Um, but I don't expect to see too much, if any, enforcement. That's not to say go and advertise it on eBay. Don't do that. Don't advertise it on eBay. But if there is a black market, we all have friends, except Jimmy. We all, we all have friends, and we all know how we can help our friends, do we not? The one thing I will say though, please, if you get involved in that, please, 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 don't bring pure Nick in. Don't bring 99%, and I'll tell you for why. At 100%, nicotine is quite safe to handle. At 99%, it is deadly and I'm not joking about now. So don't do the 100, do the 72, and as far as I'm concerned for the black market, hell yes! By the way, you can ask any questions, technical questions. We have Matt here that has a lot of expertise on technology. He's an we have, you kind of look like Phil Busardo, but like an older version as well. So you can ask any question that you want. I am not that fat. You're about a foot taller too. Yeah. The question is whether we still be able to DIY. Yeah, but you'll only be able to get 20 milligram base legally, and it'll only come in 10 milliliter bottles. Them's the rules. It's a nasty frown. We don't like that. We're working hard to try and change it, but we need all of your voices. So, look, bottom line, anything with nicotine in, maximum 10 mil bottle, maximum 20 milligrams. So if you can DIY with that, great. If you're on 3 milligram, Oh, you could get, ooh, ooh, 40 milligrams out of a 10 mil bottle. It's a pants, isn't it? Utter crap. But that's the way it is, I'm afraid, yeah. I got a question from the organizer, which was a question that we brought up last night during the TBD compliance. Are they, are they going to be stable to use drippers? Yeah. Right, now, drippers. Who here has a dripper? <laughs> By show of hands, when your dripper arrived in its box, was it in bits? Put your hands up if you say yes. That's good, because if it's in bits, it's like Meccano, it's a kit, right? So manufacturers and vendors, if you're listening, don't, don't send them out assembled. If there's a coil in and the lid's on and the chuff cap's there, so all you need to do is screw it in, drip it and vape it, that would not be legal, unfortunately, because it isn't a tank. But if it's in bits, if it's a kit like Lego, Lego, no S, or Meccano, then you're fine, and it doesn't even need to be notified. So yes, if your local shop, if where you're buying from knows what they're talking about, you can get any dripper you like as a kit. No problems there. Has there been more conclusive research on the safety of electronic cigarettes? More conclusive? The Royal College of Physicians, I think, was extremely conclusive. Um, I did a show on that last Thursday night, and we've had a message back from John Britton that basically said, where to go, guys? The Royal College of Physicians has looked at it in great depth. The 95% figure? Nah. 97% or even higher. There are no known harms from e -cigs. That's how simple it is. Point everybody at that, you won't go far wrong. I, I have a better solution for you. How many people here feel better when they quit smoking using vaping? That's all the evidence that I need. Question from over there, what's gonna happen to shows like this after the implementation of the TBD? Okay, what's gonna be made illegal or against the rules is the promotion of e cigs in a commercial context. This, however, is a market. Everybody's selling. You can't ban a market. So as far as I am concerned, and I've asked 
the head of implementation at the Department of Health the question outright. So to the best of my knowledge, Vapor Expo next year can, should, and I hope will happen. October this year. A second one. Another Vapor Expo in October this year! And trust me guys, I'll work with these lads that are putting this on to make sure they can do it. I'm there for them and I'm there for you. Any more? Anybody want to ask about Matt's dry knuckles? Just want to make sure I put that out there. Are you getting enough electrolytes? I, I'm trying. It's, yeah. But that's because I eat like shit and I'm lazy, not because of vaping. Yeah. Okay. Mech mods. Mech mods. Mech mods. There's a mech mod question. Hang on. What are your views of CBD as an alternative to nicotine? Um, CBD, cannabidiol oils. I don't see it as an alternative to nicotine. I see it as a very, very nice addition to nicotine. <laughs> Who's with me? Right, look, just to get everybody knowing where we're at with this one, CBD is perfectly legal in the UK because there's no THC. It doesn't have a psychoactive effect. It has a very relaxing, muscle relaxing effect. So anybody that thinks they might get into bother by buying any CBD juices, you won't. It's fine. And I'm here to tell you. Yeah, it's nice. It's all good. CBD's all good. CBD's all good. Right, question. Mechmod, did you answer Mechmod's? Mechmod's, what's the question? Mechmods, they're just a battery holder. Torches aren't banned. You want a mech? Have a mech. It just, you just put a battery in it and use it. It's that easy. They're not even notifiable. So mech mods, no battery power, no battery unit. It doesn't matter whether it's mech, whether it's a, a ruler, or what, it doesn't matter what it is. There's no notification required. They're just batteries. They're effectively torches with a buggered up bulb, if you understand my Geordie. So you're all good with all of that. No problem at all. Any more for any more? I got a question for Matt since he gets to see a lot of product. He, uh, you know, he's one of the most popular reviewers on YouTube. What can we anticipate to see as far as innovation that we haven't seen so far when it comes to devices and tanks? God, that's t you had to ask me a tough one. Um, so I get your thoughts. I think that stuff goes in cycles, but it also comes full circle. I mean, I, I still like, like what you've been preaching, and I agree with you, we are gonna see more mouth-to-lung stuff. I mean, you see still the most popular mouth-to-lung tank is almost, what, three years old now? So I think we're gonna see more of those types of clearomizers. Um, it's, it's a lot of the same, this year has been a little stale. Last year we knew, you know, box mods and uh, sub-ohm tanks, but uh, it's, it, that's a tough question. If I knew that, I'd be really fucking rich right now. Right, we'll take a more. We'd all be wealthy if we knew. <laughs> I kicked a boat. I liked it. <laughs> so given, given that both countries are facing regulations, is there any problem? So given that both countries, U.S. and of course in the EU market, are facing the same challenges, is there any cooperation by the advocacy organizations from both sides of the pond to achieve the common goal of keeping vaping around? Jimmy, how long have you and I worked together? It's four years. It's four years Jimmy and I have worked together. I'll go along with Kevin at VP Live as well. Uh, I've been invited to go across to the States and speak over there. I'm happy to do that. These guys have demonstrated their happiness to be here and help us out. Uh, today, and I think both Matt and Demi deserve a huge round of applause from England, Scotland, Ireland, and Wales. Come on! You guys ought to be pumped up that these guys have come across to help because they're good at what they do. And I do not look like Phil Basado, not even a little bit. I'd have to kneel down. Phil's a good friend, by the way. Um, yeah, look, we need worldwide advocacy. Let me tell you something. Have you heard of the Global Forum on Nicotine? No. This happens in Warsaw every June, and it's a gathering of experts in nicotine. 
from the new Nicotine Alliance through the Linda Balls, the John Brittons, the Clive Bates. Everybody's heard of Clive Bates? I call him master, he doesn't like it. Um, we get together in, in Warsaw and this year one of the topics of conversation for the consumer advocacy groups is a worldwide e-cig advocacy organisation fighting for everybody. And what we need is your voices behind that. Not just yours, but voices in every country in the world because, okay, the UK is going to be okay. We're going to be all right. We'll get by. But there are other countries that are going to go under the hammer and down the pan. They need our help and we've got to give it. Are you with me on that? Yeah. Are you with me on that? <laughs> there you go. And that includes America now. But the truth is, no matter where you're from, whether you're British, American, black, white, Asian, gay, Georgie. doesn't make a difference where you're from, our lungs are the same. And our lungs deserve to be healthier with this product. So we all have to fight together. This is a global war, okay? Got a question right there, hold on. Okay. What's going to happen to UK-based YouTube reviewers? All right, how many of them are there? Here, you put your hands up if you're a YouTube reviewer. All right, let me, let me give you the hints on this one. And, and I don't want to bore everybody else, so I'm going to be real quick. The one thing you can't do is promote. You have to be factual about the product that you're looking at. You can say where it came from and who produces it. Don't mention the price. And don't recommend anything. But you can say, if it has become your all-day vape for the last month, you can say that, because that's true and factual. And let your audience pull from that what you actually mean. But you couldn't, for argument's sake, say, I've been vaping on this new tank for the last three days. It does blah, does this, does that, does the other. Uh, I love the colour. I think it's great, and I would recommend you get one. That last bit you can't say, that's promotional. And what's going to happen is the Advertising Standards Authority is sitting there with its wicked keeper's gloves on, waiting for Martin McKee and Simon Capewell and the other wankers, sorry, the other uh, academics, to make the complaints to the ASA. When they do, then the ASA will have to act. But one thing you need to be aware of is that the first network that is going to be attacked, this has already been confirmed, will be Vapor Trails TV. So we'll take one for the team and get the buggers sorted out. But just be careful out there, guys. Be careful. You should be all right, but just be careful. What's going to happen with uh, Facebook groups concerning vaping? <laughs> That's down to Zuckerberg. Um, there's nothing legal that the UK can do to censor any Facebook groups. Uh, Zuckerberg might take a different view, because frankly the man's off his trolley. Um, I didn't say that. You never heard it. I would never say that. Cut that out of the video, Matt. <laughs> Now, if the Facebook groups, again, ought to be fine. You can say what you, will, what you like because you are in a joint group. It's kind of a private club, and it's not out there for the public to see. If you're at all worried, make it a private group, and then people have to ask to join. Otherwise, I can't see there being a problem. There's no problem with Twitter. There's no problem with any of these social networks. You should be okay. It's free speech, after all, and we still have that. Here's a question that I have. There's a lot of UK, uh, US liquid manufacturers in this room today. Yeah. And there's a lot of buyers and there's a lot of vapors. What's going to happen to the importation of US liquid into the EU, the steps that the manufacturers have to take, and what should the buyers here and the vapors look out for? Oh, God, this is such a long one. Right. Brief. I'll keep it as quick as I can. If a United States juice manufacturer wants to come into the UK and has footprint in the UK, physical footprint, then they have to abide by all the rules. If they don't have physical footprint if the UK, in the UK, and because they can't advertise to the UK via the normal channels, if you then choose to buy from abroad, 120 mil bottles, 180 mil bottles, you're going to pay some duty. That's about the size of it. But there is no 
ban order on imports of nicotine containing e-liquids into the UK. Not at present and there is no intention to put one on. So you should be able to buy juices from the US for the next two years, depending on the FDA. Yeah? You can buy. And I'm sorry, I, you know, I really feel for you guys over there because what, what's happened with the FDA absolutely stinks. Eh? You're fucked. You're fucked. And given anybody that's from Texas is fucked even more because everything's bigger in Texas. I'm sorry to use language like that, but it's the best way to put it. The Yanks are fucked. We need to help them. So, yeah, you can buy from the States. I will. You'll be there for two years. And you've got to get the money together. All of the American EC companies have got to get the money together and get it to court. You can do that. Fight it. Fight long, hard and proud. And Timmy's having a conversation. The alternative, of course, is if the American juice companies want to come to England and work, we'll have you. We'll have you. Yeah, you can come. You can come. We'll have you. Creamy flavors. CBD. Takes us good. Right. How about retailers advertising their product? Not, not manufacturers, retailers that are selling electronic systems. Right. Retailers advertising. Point of sale advertising is fine. Um, billboard advertising is fine. Get this. You can advertise on the back and sides of a bus as long as it doesn't cross the channel. If it crosses the channel, it's cross-border. But if it's not cross-border, billboard advertising, that kind of stuff, that's all good. It's absolutely fine. There will be more advice coming out of the Advertising Standards Authority within the next two weeks, because this happens on May the 20th. That's the only bit that happens on May the 20th, really. Keep tuned in to vaportrails.tv. As soon as I've got the info, I'll be putting it on the shows. And f for information, Thursday coming, we'll be talking about exactly what's going on now in as much detail as I can get. And if I can get one of the people from the Department of Health on the show, I shall. Easy URL, e6.live. Dead easy, e6.live. Tune in, 8.30, we'll be there. Matt will be there. That'll be good. There's another question. Does CBD come out when you do drug or alcohol tests? <laughs> yeah. Yes. It, it depends on what they're testing for. If they're testing for the full range, then it will because the cannabidiol is in there and its half-life is something like 18 hours, I think. So depending on how much you've had. You're not a policeman, are you? No, because I know quite a few bobbies that use CBD and stop for five days before their monthly check. Just so you know. I will be selling people's sort of urine after the show. Come see me if you want. I got really special on a couple of liters. You've been taking the piss out of Phil for ages, haven't you? <laughs> More questions coming. Yeah. I guess I know this, the answer to this. If a tank is supplied in a kit, it comes, still comes under the TBD, correct? And here's a present for you, too. I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's the 250 milligram stuff as well. Thank you. That's going straight in the tank. It's going straight in the tank. Cheers, man. Will do. Right, um, tanks. Again, if it's in kit form, if you think about it, if a tank has no atomizer in it and there's no tube on it, and there's no base and there's no top because they're all separate, then it's a kit. It is a kit. And extension kits are just kits. They're not tanks. There may be room for trading standards to look at it and go, it's obviously a tank. I wouldn't take the chance. But certainly, there's no reason why a 2 mil tank can't have a 5 mil, 8 mil, 8 mil 10 mil extension tank on it. That's the way that stands. But again, we'll go into great detail on the shows uh, moving up to May 20th and November 20th.
This is a great question, and this is something that we deal with a lot in the United States with uh, with Matt, some of the branding. How is the TBD going to handle, or are they authorized to handle, copyright infringement, crossover branding, and some of the products that we've seen, obviously, in these last shows? Well, first off, crossover branding is not allowed. So if BAT wanted to brand up an e-cig as whatever, or if Philip Morris wanted to brand it as, as a Marlboro, that's not allowed, that's officially verboten. But anybody flogging a juice that passes itself off as another brand, and I think we all know what we're talking about, I'm not going to mention them because I don't want to give them oxygen. They are breaking all kinds of rules and laws, and quite frankly, nobody should be buying from them anyway. And frankly, the sooner Ben & Jerry's takes a certain company to court, the better I'll be pleased. Are you all with me on that? then please don't buy from the bastards. I nearly said, no, I don't want to go This lady's present. <laughs> yeah, I'm still not allowed to say <laughs> This is a question from Matt, finally. Uh, gentleman wants to know, how did you get into vaping? Uh, that's a good question, actually. I had uh, oral cancer. And so it, it wasn't like really bad. We caught it early, but that's what really finally, I had quit a few times before that. And it just, you know, for like a year or two and it never stuck. And so that finally is what propelled me into, uh, you know, starting to vape. And even then, you know, I, I got a blue kit and uh, I, I went back to smoking for a few months, even after that, after I knew I, you know, was prone to cancer. So it just shows how strong, you know, the addiction is. But Thankfully, I, you know, I, it's been, what, three years, I think, since I've had a cigarette, so. Woo! Woo! Yes! Yes! Any more for any more? Any questions anywhere? No? No? Right. Oh, yes, there. Then I want to teach you all something that I want you to do every day. The question is for new up and coming companies, small juice makers that started with DIY and now they're trying to break into the business. How will the TBD affect them with the upcoming regulations? Okay, they will have to apply, uh, comply obviously with the TPD, which means bottle size and so on. The testing, toxin emissions testing will have to be done, but after we've spoken with the, the Department of Health and MHRA, the MHRA has decided that we do not have to test every nicotine concentrate of every flavor so if you've got banana pecan maple dog turd juice in 3 6 9 12 15 and 18 you only need to test the 18 so you don't have to pay for the testing on all the rest that's dropping the price down after consultation with you the vapors and with all of the interested parties the cost for notifying dropped from a, a 220 pounds down to 150 pounds one more time Thank you, NNA. So that's, that's where it stands. It's about as inexpensive as it can be, certainly cheaper than Belgium, where they've got to test every last iteration of the juice and then pay 4,000 euros per skew to notify it. Belgium is fucked. And I think it's important to, to say that the TBD is a uh, revolving regulation. It'll take two or three years to finalize everything. So the more pressure that you, the voters, and the citizens of the EU put on your politicians and on the TBD, some of the things might change eventually. If they see that there's a lot of pressure on the 10 mil restriction, maybe a 30 mil will be allowed because the 10 mil really doesn't make any sense. So keep that in mind. What we see now is not finalized and it will be keep evolving over the next two or three years as the product's in the market. All right, any more questions before we go? It's just been one about labeling. Um, just to clarify this one about labeling. Yes, e-liquids will have to carry a bloody health warning in black text, Helvetica, on a white background with a black border taking up 30% of the bottle and every bottle of e-liquid will have to come with a leaflet that has, get this, instructions for use. I'm not entirely certain that drip some talk it will work, 
but that's basically the size of it, so that'll be that. Are we nearly done? Can I teach them what I want them to teach them? Any more questions? All right, people, I want you to put your left hand like this and repeat after me. Vapon! Vapart! And don't let the bastards grind you down! Give it up for David Gore and Vapor Trails TV and New Nicodina Alliance. Matt and V came all the way down here from the States from Suck My Mod. I'm Dimitri. Thank you guys. We love being here. We want to thank the organizers for putting on a hell of an event again. And thank you so much for having us. Thank you! Can we give it up for them one more time? I need you as loud as possible for these three individuals, man. They're doing what they can to help save your life today. Making sure we can still do this.